Welcome back. Today's video is going to be a little shorter than the last one. We're going to um, clean up some errors, fix a few things, and take a look at the features that the open world server is, uh, system is giving us and how we can, uh, how we can uh, leverage those in our project. Uh, the first thing we need to take a look at is there has been an update of the open world server system, uh, 722 here. In the previous video, we were using the 718 version. Um, that version's not going to work anymore. We need the 722 version. If you use the 718 version, then you're need, going to need to follow the update steps we're doing here. If you already have the 722 version, then you're good to go and you can skip these. So I've downloaded this uh, zip file here, and I'm going to open it up. And all we're interested in is this OWS plugin. So I'm going to copy it come back here. This is our open world starter plugin that we were working on in the last video. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste it. And when it asks if I want to replace the files, I'm going to say yes. So now we have the latest plugin. Normally that's all you'd have to do to update the plugin, but uh, this one had some, some nasty uh, 4.20 uh, issues, and so we're going to actually have to uh, have to f make a change here and fix something. So let's open up our project. One blueprint's gonna gonna need a blueprint node renamed. Okay, so we're gonna go down here to third person BP blueprints, third person character. We're not using this. We won't be using this, but it's in here, and I don't like things to be broken. So we're gonna come down here that out of the way where it's got this update character stats I'm just deleting it and unfortunately it was not able to reuse names like we used to be able to do and 4.20 does not allow duplicate U function names uh, so anyway that's the change you got to make there um, the next thing if you remember in the other video when we exited out there was this add chat line error that popped up and uh, it was a timing issue, it's an easy fix. So we're gonna go into the third person player controller, open up this add chat line function. This here needs to be checked to make sure that it's a valid object. We're gonna slide these out of the way. And we're gonna add is valid, and we want the macro. This will fix that uh, chat error we were seeing in the last video. Okay, so now I got that taken care of. And uh, now there was something else here that um, we didn't test last time. But we've got our running working and stuff, but you know what? I never hit the jump key. <laughs> Watch what happens. Oh, that does not look good. No, that does not look good at all. So. <laughs> We were going through that animation BP pretty quick, and uh, we missed something. So let's go in there and fix that. So we're going to go into our heroes, Sarah, animations, BP, and BP. And this one was in the jump uh, state machine. And so the mistake we made here is that these all have conditions where they moved on to the next one when they finished, but they can't finish if they're looping. So see how it says loop animation? So we need to uncheck this. So in all three of these, jump start, jump apex, and jump pre-land. I need to go in there, did I get that one? Got to fix those. And now let's take a look at what that does. I'm hoping it looks a little bit better. There we go. They're getting that nice transition, just like it did in Paragon. Uh, so that was another another error there for moving a little too quick. Uh, so the next thing we're going to take a look at, now that we've fixed our errors, <clears throat> is um, I think a, a few people might have been confused uh, about the open world server system. Not everybody has seen that before and tried that out. And uh, so I want to take a look at 
uh, some ways that we can use that, what that gives us, and what that's going to mean to our project here is it's kind of the core that we're starting on. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back here and open up this RPG World server. And I'm going to run this as administrator. And if you haven't set this up yet, uh, you're going to want to. What you want to do is make sure that this is the path to your 4.2 editor in Path Dedicated Server. And then you want this server arguments to be the path to this U project file right here. So I'm going to go and just copy that. I hit Control C. And then I'm going to come back here. And I got to not lose that first double quote or this is going to break. And I'm going to go and I want to leave the slash open world starter U project. So this now here matches the path of what it's going, of what the server is going to open. And then, of course, you want to make sure that your API key is in here. And so we're going to hit start server. And we're going to test the connection to the management server. This is what you should see if you're not getting back, back this test connection successful. This is not going to work, and you need to go back to the troubleshooting uh, section and the install instructions and see what you missed. Make sure it says test connection successful. And then uh, we are going to go, you know what? Let's check something real quick here. So I've got this button here to launch the management console. And so I just want to make sure that, uh, let's see here. I think I'm using for demo. And so uh, this is the management console for the open world server system. And uh, so we can access our characters here. And we can take a look at our world servers. This is something that you will need set up or you uh, will not get test connection successful. So make sure you got that set up. Any running zone instances, there's nothing running right now, but there will be soon. And we've got our zones set up. This is when we add new maps, we can uh, map them to zones. We've got an items database uh, for doing inventory management. We've got a global data section you can use to store any kind of data you need permanently persisted that's not related to characters. Um, and then we can get our docs. So I just want to take a look and see that real quick and show you that you can get to that real quick with this launch management console button. Um, so let's go, and I'm going to leave it on zone instances because we're going to come back and take a look at that. Let's go back here. And we're gonna, for this test, we're going to want to run uncheck this run dedicated server. Now, we got to make sure we turn this back on in the future or we're going to have trouble. But for this test, we got to turn that off. And so let's go to, um, you know what? I already opened it, but you guys won't have it. So let's go open level, third person BP maps, and we're going to open the login level. OK, and now we got to make sure this is unchecked, because what we're doing now is we don't want UE4 to launch the dedicated server. We want the RPG world server to launch the dedicated server. And so we're going to hit play. And we're going to log in with our user. Uh, you know what? If this is your first time doing this, I recommend hitting this create account and creating an account. Use this email address as your username and uh, your password there. But I've already got one created. So we should see Serif. And we do. OK, um, this is the only character we have. So we're going to hit select this character. And what's happening behind the scenes here ah, is we have a server being launched. And you can see here that it says starting map zone, third person example map on port, such and such. And you can see we loaded in here. And if we go over to the zone instances and we refresh the list, we can see that uh, this zone ID 796 was launched on world server ID 86 on port 7778. And so it now knows uh, that we're running that server. And uh, here's the server right here. And so now we can run around. And uh, we could have friends connect right now, and we would see them, and we could play against them. And uh, the other thing that um, is a key feature 
of this uh, open world server system is the ability to chain maps together to create larger worlds. Now in this case, um, we just have this example map here and you can't, it actually like looks like it's the edge of the world here, right? But we could actually, and what we're gonna do in the future, is create a massive seamless um, terrain. Um, I think we might do a 4K by 4K, we'll see. Either 2K by 2K or 4K by 4K size map. We'll see, what, we'll see when we get to world composition. And you can basically create these barriers. So there's actually an invisible barrier across that. And that invisible barrier tells me that when I run into that barrier, it needs to transfer me to the matching side of the other side of that barrier. So if I go right here, it's going to map me across at that, val at that value. But if I go over here, it's going to map me across over here. And it knows what uh, zone to send me to. And so I'm going to go across to it. First time it's going to take a little bit to load because we haven't spun it up yet. So it's going to actually spin up another server. OK, and we're now in a different zone, map two. And uh, so now if we go back across here, it'll be a lot quicker this time because it doesn't have to load the server because it's already up. And here we are on the other side. So it basically used the, uh, in this case, it was probably a Y value. Um, and it basically took that, uh, took that vector and figured out where to put us on the opposite side. So you can set up those you can set up those portals uh, to transfer you across as needed. And because they transfer you across where you entered them, uh, you don't deal with uh, gate camping or other things with, um, with a portal that always puts you in the same place. Depending on what kind of game world you're building, though, there, are also, there is also an option to have your portal always put you in the exact same place. So it just depends on how you wanna, how you wanna lay out your world. Um, you also don't need to um, you don't need to lay out your world in perfect squares, and they don't have to be adjacent to each other. So one of the things that um, we do is that we'll often have a city inside of a larger wilderness-type area, and we want the city to have the illusion of higher population. And so what we'll do is we'll have the city be one or more zones uh, to basically um, increase the player density and give that illusion of higher player population. And so we can use, you know, entrances to the uh, city as uh, portals that you go through and, uh, and change zones. And um, each one of these zones can, uh, can hold whatever, whatever the population limit of your server instance is for your game. You know, um, Fortnite's running 100, um, but that took a lot, of, a lot of optimization for them to do that. Um, I think you'd probably be safer expecting somewhere 60 to 80 uh, depending on what kind of game you have, how complex your combat is, and uh, what kind of server hardware you're able to run this on, get an idea of how many servers you can run per instance, but um, you can scale instances up uh, as often as you want and run as many as you want. Uh, OWS will load balance them across. Switch back over here. You can now see there's the second one running map two. And uh, so in this case, there's one of each. Um, if the population limit of third person example map got over our limit, uh, let's take a look here in zones and we'll edit a zone. See, so we've got a soft uh, player cap and hard player cap. The idea of this is that it'll start spawning um, new instances once it hits 60. Um, so it'll start spawning multiple instances of the same zone at 60. Uh, but we've got this hard cap. Uh, which can be used to basically say, hey, don't let anybody higher than this number. So what we're doing is between these two numbers, we're basically leaving 20 slots open for friends to be able to move around between uh, servers if possible. And then in the case that um, some friends need to move, there's no room, they'll just all get moved uh, to another server that does have room, or it'll spin up a new one for, for them as needed. Um, so we could end up having, you know, 10 third-person example map instances here, uh, all running on different ports and also running on different hardware. So in this case, you can see that we just have one hardware device running here, which in this case is this PC. Um, but we could have you know, 10, 50, 100 devices here to be able to load balance these instances across um, as needed, and we could create a large world. 
Um, so I wanted to show you guys um, some of how that worked, and hopefully that um, that clears up uh, some confusion about uh, about where we're headed. Um, eventually, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, get rid of this get rid of this example thing here, and we're going to create ourselves a proper uh, a proper world with a, with the terrain, and uh, and get that all working. We'll probably use um, probably use some kite demo assets. They got some nice trees in there, some grass. We'll build that out. Maybe we'll grab um, some of Paragon's new, um, you know, uh, new assets, static meshes and stuff for for building out a map. Or maybe we'll find something else. We'll have to see see what we can add. Um, but that's basically uh, where we're headed. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, some people had issues uh, getting the OWS set up. There's support forwarding stuff you have to do and everything. There's a video. Definitely watch the video. Um, but if you have any issues setting it up, let me know. I've helped over 100 people get it set up. I think I've only ever had two people that we couldn't get it set up on. They both lived in Germany and had IPv6 only addresses. And unfortunately, UE4 does not support hosting from IPv6 addresses. There's nothing I can do about that. But uh, otherwise, I'm sure we can get it set up for you guys. OK, until next time.